Invasive species are one of the main factors behind modern day extinctions, but of course some areas are worse affected than others. Obviously it's not the animal's fault that it's invasive, as we humans are the real animals to blame, and we are easily the worst invasive species on this planet. In some of the worst affected areas around the world, some invasive species have started to interact with one another outside of their native range, and in some cases they even prey on one another. In today's video, I will be going through just a few of these cases, and for our first story, we will be heading over to Florida. Famously, Florida is one of the worst affected areas when it comes to invasive species, and there are many non-native apex predators living here. Its waters are full of fish from Asia and South America, but in this section, I will be focusing on the reptiles that are found there. Because Florida has a warmer, more humid climate than most of the US, a large number of non-native reptiles can survive here. A lot of these reptiles got here through the pet trade, but some of them have managed to escape from zoos or private collections. Each species can have a massive effect on the ecosystem, from the tiny non-native geckos to the small population of escaped Nile crocodiles. One reptile that's had a massive effect on the Floridian ecosystem is the black and white tegu, and this animal has been in Florida since the early 2000s. The majority of black and white tegus in Florida originated from escaped pets, but now there are thousands of them across over 35 counties. Tegus are very successful invaders as they are extremely adaptable and they can reproduce and grow rapidly. This large lizard can have a massive negative effect on the ecosystem and they threaten many native birds and reptiles. The black and white tegu is omnivorous and it feeds on a wide variety of plants and animals. They cause the biggest problems by feeding on eggs and they will target the nests of endangered reptiles and ground nesting birds. One other invasive reptile has had a similar effect on the Floridian ecosystem and it's another invader from South America. The spectacled caiman, also known as the common caiman, is a crocodilian in the alligator family and it's native to Central and South America. These animals grow to a max length of around 2.5 meters and they can reach a maximum weight of around 40 kilograms. This is of course a very impressive size, but there are much larger crocodilians in Florida. The spectacled caiman was first sighted in Florida in the 1950s and since then it's had a big impact on the native wildlife. They compete with the much larger native crocodilians such as the American alligator and the American crocodile and they even spread diseases to these animals. They will feed on their young and their eggs, and unsurprisingly, they will go to war with the black and white tegu. The relationship between the tegu and the spectacled caiman isn't a straightforward predator-prey relationship, as they will actually feed on each other. Larger spectacled caiman will target small to medium-sized tegu, and the black and white tegu will eat the caiman's eggs and their young. This battle can take place across their native range as their ranges do overlap, but weirdly today it also happens in North America. This occurrence illustrates just how bad the invasive species problem is in Florida and it shows no signs of improving in the future. Hawaii is another hot spot for invasive species as quite a few creatures have been introduced over the years. Many of these animals were introduced to solve the problems of man, but in most cases they backfired and ended up harming the native plants and animals. Cane toads and barn owls were introduced to control pest numbers across the islands, but both species ended up causing major damages to the ecosystem. One of the animals we will be focusing on were introduced for a similar reason, as they were brought to Hawaii to control rat numbers on sugarcane fields. The small Indian mongoose is native to a large area of Asia, but it's been introduced into quite a few Caribbean and Pacific islands. These animals were introduced into Hawaii in the early 1900s because of their rumoured ability to control insect and rodent numbers. This introduction backfired as they mostly targeted native birds that had evolved in the absence of mammalian predators. These adaptable mammals also target the nests of endangered sea turtles and as they have very few predators across Hawaii, their numbers have gotten out of control. They have contributed to the extinction of a few native Hawaiian birds, but unfortunately these mammals are only part of the problem. Hawaii also has an invasive reptile problem with snakes, geckos and chameleons being found across many of the main islands. Even though chameleons are known for mostly feeding on insects, larger specimens will target small mammals and birds. And as veiled chameleons can lay almost 300 eggs a year, they can spread very quickly. 
There are very few native predators on Hawaii that will target these reptiles, but luckily the non-native mongooses will. Mongooses are very adaptable and feisty, and they are more than happy to get their meals in different forms. The geckos and chameleons aren't traditionally what they'd eat on a regular basis across their native range. But as they're in an alien ecosystem, it makes sense that they have a slightly alien diet. These small mammals still do a lot more harm than good, but at least they help to curb the reptile population on Hawaii. As I've covered in a recent video, Europeans introduced quite a few non-native species into New Zealand. Many of these animals have had a lasting effect on the ecosystem and it's likely that New Zealand's freshwaters will never be the same. The brown trout and the rainbow trout are often listed as some of the worst invasive species as they have been introduced into many countries around the world. In most cases, they aren't viewed as a negative species to have around as they are a popular food and sport fish, but as they are predatory, they can have a big impact on native fish, amphibian and crustacean numbers. Since their introduction in the 1800s, they have outcompeted the native freshwater fish species and they are found across almost all of the country. Even though the introduction of trout into New Zealand has had a massive negative effect on the ecosystem, they are very good at controlling a few other invaders. There are a few different species of rat and mouse that have invaded these shores over the years and these animals are bad news for the native birds. The native birds have evolved over millions of years without any land mammals on the islands, so they were ill-equipped to deal with the rodents when they arrived. Rodents have had the biggest impact on ground nesting birds as they are more than happy to feed on their chicks and their eggs. Because of the lack of predators and competition in New Zealand, the trout are known to grow abnormally large, and this added size means that they are more than capable of targeting the non-native rodents. Mice and rats regularly enter the freshwaters of New Zealand to get to new feeding grounds or to find a mate, and this can be extremely perilous. This is where many young rodents meet their demise, and a large trout can eat a surprisingly large amount of rodents. Even though this strange predator-prey relationship is a slight help, it still has a minimal effect on rodent numbers, but hopefully the situation will improve in the future. Japan has a beautifully vibrant ecosystem, but strangely there are a lot of American animals that can be found here. Quite a few American animals have been introduced here over the years, and the reasons behind these introductions vary greatly. Some were introduced for sport fishing, some were introduced because they are popular pets, and some were introduced for their fur. American bullfrogs were introduced into Japan to be farmed for food in 1918, and today they can be found in all prefectures and many islands. Japan has a large number of native amphibians, but few of them are as large and dominant as the American bullfrog. They are known for their aggression and their voracious appetites, and they easily bully smaller amphibians. Thankfully, there is one very famous amphibian in Japan that will happily target these invaders, but they are relatively rare. The Japanese giant salamander is one of the largest amphibians in the world and it will happily feed on fish, insects, crustaceans and of course other amphibians. These giant animals do their best to control American bullfrog numbers but they also get some help from another invader. The American mink was first introduced into Japan for their fur in the 1920s, but by the 1960s they had become established in the wild. Mink are very adaptable mammals and they feed on a wide variety of creatures. They have been introduced into quite a few countries around the world and they usually have a massive impact on the native fish and birds. Mink often feed on animals many times their own weight so they can target most small to medium sized animals in Japan. This means that they are more than happy to target the American bullfrogs in Japan and they will also target a few of the invasive American fish too. The situation is so out of hand that predator-prey relationships that occur in North America also occur in Japan, and this isn't the only example. Europe has also been invaded by a large number of American animals and some of these animals interact with one another on a regular basis. The signal crayfish is one of the most well-known invasive species across Europe and they have been extremely successful. These crustaceans were introduced into Europe for commercial purposes in the 1960s and this was after the native crayfish populations were destroyed by plague. The signal crayfish was a carrier of the plague so it made the situation even worse and allowed them to easily take over. 
One other American invader has made Europe its new home, but this invader is slightly more endearing. The raccoon is the largest member of its family and it's native to North and Central America. They are known for their adaptability, intelligence and their fondness of urban areas and today there are millions of raccoons across Europe. The vast majority of these animals are found in Germany and this is where they were introduced in both 1934 and 1945. In Germany they are known as wash bears and this is because they appear to wash their food in water. Raccoons have extremely sensitive hands and they often search for food in the water by thrashing them around. This is a very effective way to catch animals such as the signal crayfish and this is exactly what they do in Germany. This predator-prey relationship is now common in both North America and Europe and the raccoons in Europe are making the most out of a very strange situation. Just like New Zealand, Australia's ecosystem was changed forever when the Europeans arrived. As I've covered many times on the channel before, the Europeans introduced many birds, mammals and fish from Europe. And one of the main reasons behind these introductions was to make the settlers feel at home. This is of course a very stupid reason to introduce an animal into a non-native ecosystem and I'm sure they were completely unaware of the damage that they would cause. Australia is known by many as the mammal extinction capital of the world and the main reason behind this is invasive species. Australia was isolated from the rest of the world for millions of years and over this time many distinctive endemic animals evolved. The native animals were ill-equipped to deal with the invaders and unfortunately many of them were wiped out. The two animals that have arguably had the biggest impact on the Australian ecosystem are the European rabbit and the red fox. The populations of both of these animals exploded when they arrived down under and they have caused an extreme loss in biodiversity. As these invaders have a predator-prey relationship in Europe, they also have a predator-prey relationship in Australia. And one of the only benefits of having red foxes in Australia is that they prey on the invasive rabbits. Conservationists in Australia are doing their best to help the affected endangered species and hopefully they will be able to bounce back in the future. Cuba is among the most biodiverse countries in the world and it's home to many species that can't be found anywhere else. This is why it's very worrying that Cuba is also the country with the fourth most invasive species, as this threatens its native wildlife. Cats are not seen as an invasive species by many, but they are among the worst invasive species in the world. Of the 700 million cats in the world, an estimated 480 million are feral and they have contributed to hundreds of extinctions around the world. Cat predation on wildlife is the result of their natural instincts and behaviour, and in areas with an abundance of prey they soon multiply. One country with a massive cat problem is Australia, and each year cats in Australia kill over a billion mammals, almost 400 million birds, and over 600 million reptiles. In Cuba, feral cats are common, and as I covered in a recent video, they have been targeting the young of the critically endangered Cuban crocodile. Thankfully, they also do their part to control non-native reptiles too, and some of the worst invasive reptiles in Cuba are geckos. Geckos can easily travel from country to country unnoticed as they are often found near humans and can easily crawl onto boats unnoticed. Cats are extremely effective reptile hunters and they are more than happy to put a shift in on this Caribbean island. Cats are beautiful animals and great pets, but when they find themselves in the wild they can cause serious damages to the ecosystem. For our final story, we will be heading back over to the crazy state of Florida, but this time we will be taking a look at a toxic amphibian. The cane toad is famous for its predator killing abilities and around the world it's caused major problems. They were introduced into many countries because of their rumoured ability to remove cane beetles from plantations. But not only were they not effective at doing this, but they also have the ability to kill large apex predators. Instead of focusing on a predator-prey relationship in this final story, I will be focusing on an instance where an invasive species kills other invasive species. Famously, Florida has a problem with invasive snakes, with some of the largest species being the Burmese python, the African rock python, and the common boa. Some of these snakes can fall victim to the cane toad's poison, but some species are immune to its toxins. 
predators that have evolved with the cane toads have had time to adapt to their toxins, but when they're plopped into a new ecosystem there's little to no chance for the native species. Thankfully there are quite a few animals that are naturally resistant to toxins and snakes that feed on other toxic toads are usually immune to the cane toads toxins. Unfortunately, many predators in Florida are not immune, and this includes many of the invasive predators. It's not all doom and gloom, as some intelligent animals are winning the war against these infamous amphibians, and one of these animals is the Rakali. The Rakali is a semi-aquatic mammal native to Australia, and it's known for its intelligence and its adaptability. When the cane toads were first introduced into Australia, many Rakali were lost to cane toads, but since then they have learnt to adapt. They are often witnessed turning cane toads onto their backs and eating the non-toxic parts of the amphibians. The freshwater crocodiles in Australia have also started to change their behaviour to avoid these animals, and this gives hope to all the other areas where cane toads are invasive. Florida will never likely return to the state it was in before humans started introducing non-native animals, but at least there's hope that the native animals can adapt and survive. Of course, there are many other stories such as these around the world, and I've covered some of them in a previous video. If you think you know of any others, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.